สวัสดีครับ Welcome to p a l e l a k University Global Program. This is a program that we aims to disseminate information about development related to our efforts to internationalize p a l e l a k University. Uh, with me today on the program, uh, first of all, Dr. Malika j a r e n Sutasini, the Dean of the School of Science, and uh, Dr. Ali Zahabi, uh, a lecturer at the School of Languages and General Education. Uh, Ali actually is from Iran. Uh, Dr. Malika, uh, she is a Thai. Uh, who has studied, spent a lot of her time, a lot of her time overseas in the United States. Uh, what we are going to talk today is about a very important development at w e l l e l a k University, which is about uh, teaching and learning reform. And the essence of the teaching and learning reform is the adoptions of the United Kingdom Professional Standards Framework, or UKPSA for short. Uh, I'm very happy to. Report to the people, uh, particularly to parents and our friends, uh, both in Thailand and overseas, that uh, we have done very well in terms of getting our teaching people, teaching staff, uh, apply for fellowship. Uh, it is it is called the Higher Education Academy uh, Fellowship or HEA Fellowship. Uh, this is a very important um, uh, part of uh, teaching and learning development at Wei Lak University. We believe now w e l l e l a k University uh, ranked very well in terms of the numbers of fellowship, HEA fellowship, uh, in the countries and in fact uh, in the world. We have uh, since the adoption of the UK PSF, uh, since we have uh, get our teaching staff to apply for fellowship. Uh, currently, we have 135 fellowships, uh, among whom there are uh, more than 30 uh, senior fellowship, and uh, the two. Persons who are on the program today, they are both uh, senior uh, fellows of the Higher edu Education Academy, uh, uh, Academy. and um, so we want to focus today on their experience uh, on teaching and learning as a result of uh, as a result of their training um, under this framework, uh, which we value very highly. Uh, this is this framework is very highly recognized. It is internationally recognized around the world. Uh, it's developed by the United Kingdom uh, universities, uh, run currently by Advance HE, formerly known as the uh, Higher, uh, Higher Education Academy. Uh, many countries have adopted this, particularly uh, Australia, uh, New Zealand, and other countries. Uh, some in the U.S. Uh, so, and we have. Um, I think we have done very well. So, first of all. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask Dr. Ali and Dr. Malika um, about the extent to which the UK PSF uh, training, or in other words, you both have now achieved the senior fellowship, uh, has enhanced or has helped your teaching. Maybe we yes, we can begin with Dr. Ali. Sure. Uh Well, uh, first of all, I would like to take this opportunity and thank, especially Dr. s u r i n the Vice President of Alilak University, and also uh, Professor Sombat for providing this opportunity for the lecturers of Alilak University. As you mentioned, Dr. s u r i n it's really important to use UKPSF, uh, especially as a benchmark for all the lecturers here at uh, Alilak University. So that uh, for me, it was really a fantastic experience in which uh, I had the chance to, uh, I mean, to get to know uh, more about the other disciplines, the lectures from other departments, to see what's going on. I mean, and also it was like a, a kind of a sharing experience with, uh, I mean, lectures from different departments, different schools at the Wallaylak University. Yeah, which I really appreciate, and I really enjoy being part of it. Thank you, Dr. Malika. Uh, thank you, Vice President Surin. Uh, this is uh, the question that Dr. Surin has asked is very important because uh, that means um, we we do care about how we actually deliver really good educations to undergrads and grad students. Okay, so as a school of science, it's not just myself, but 
all the faculty staffs really, really uh, pay attention to how we actually deliver, how we teach students. So for UKPSF, it's actually set up the framework that we need to comply. Sometimes when we teach for 20 years, sometimes we think we know it all about how we actually becoming a really great teacher. But for UKPSF, they have to make sure that you have to know the uh, area of activities, okay? You have to cover all the areas. And then you thinking about the knowledge that you deliver to your student. So that called core, core knowledge, okay? So you have to pay attention to the materials, how you deliver, how you access your students. This is really important. And then UKPSF actually thinking about the professional value, okay? How these actually make impact. So I'm really grateful that Wale Lap University, especially uh, Vice President Surin, actually really, really keen and actually make us doing all these because the impacts really actually, you know, benefit to all the students, even academic staff. Thank you, Dr. Malika, for talking about the quality teaching and learning at Wale Lap University. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, this is part of the major reform at Valley Lab University on teaching and learning. And uh, there are actually 15 dimensions prescribed uh, by the UK PSA framework. Uh, as Dr. Malika has uh, mentioned, it covers cover, uh, the way you prepare your teaching, it covers uh, the teaching methods, the appropriate methods including uh, how you plan your subject, including the feedback, including assessment. And, uh, and more importantly, the value of uh, being a professional teacher. Uh, in other words, uh, how would you be uh, very highly trained as a lecturer? You know, so, so continue professional, uh, continuing professional development is also part of that as well. So, so the emphasis here is really, really that we want to bring uh, teaching to the center of our work at Valley Lack University. Yes, uh, we are strong on research. Yes, we are very strong in terms of community development. But at the same time, we will want to make sure that uh, teaching and learning is treated with utmost seriousness. The quality of our graduate, in other words, we want to produce graduates who are work ready uh, who go out and get jobs, uh, who get good, uh, you know, jobs. Uh, you are, uh, you know, you, you who can, you know, progress in their uh, professional career. Now, Dr. Malika, um, uh, what sort of uh, reflections from your staff? Uh, you, uh, your school, the School of Science, actually uh, has the largest number of fellowship of HEA fellowships currently at Valley Lack University and thanks to your efforts. Um, so what else have you observed in terms of the change in the uh, teaching and learning practice of your staff and perhaps uh, from student size as well as a result of the UK PSA? Um, this is a very tough question, <laughs> in fact. Okay, so Faculty of Science, uh, we have 50 faculty members. Okay, so we actually do teaching all the basic science and mathematics. So as you know, the subject can be really, really difficult for some, some students. Um, in the past, uh, 30 to 50% of the students actually get an F, okay? From uh, calculus classes or basic chemistry classes. But after we actually uh, implemented UKPSF, okay? So everybody pay attention to how we set up uh, formative assessment, okay, and summative assessment. In the past, we used to have midterm and then final, okay, and then everybody get like, oh my gosh, I didn't get 50% 50 of the score, and then you will get, you know, F or D dog or whatever, okay. So uh, now we know that we have to actually understand the student ha uh, come, come with different diverse background. So we have to pay attention of the, uh, their academic level. We have to pay attention about their gender. We, um, we're thinking about uh, would we use appropriate technology, okay? And uh, we get feedback. When we give student assignment, in the past, we might not even uh, grade and then turn their grade. 
right immediately after the class. But now we know that we have to pay those kind of attention because students actually looking forward to positive feedback. I personally, okay, believe in negative feedback would actually damage student confidence. So School of Science, we make sure that when uh, our academic staff providing feedback, you have to keep uh, something, saying something really good, boost up their confidence, and then the student would love to do more. So all these just little detail of examples that UKPSF actually makes School of Science to be, you know, student center oriented ac active learning, mm -hmm. okay? And mm -hmm. we guarantee you that uh, Wai Lak University serves you with the best education. Thank you for that. Well, what, uh, I like this because once uh, once you decided on individual student learning, once you look take into consideration uh, sort of uh, assessment that has to be uh, has to be very well targeted. Uh, once you focus on uh, uh, instant feedback, that's clear. Quite it is quite clear that at the School of Science, um, it has really change the culture of teaching. And, and I, I believe that this is, what, um, this is what has contributed significantly to the development of, of teaching and learning at Valley Luck University. Now, Ali, uh, Ali actually uh, teaches English as a second language subjects and, and it's a bit tricky because, uh, uh, because you are teaching English as a second language to a non-English speaking students, uh, Thai students. Um, from Thailand, where English is not used as, on a daily basis, this is at a foreign language. And uh, but such thing as formative assessment, such thing as uh, close attention to individual students, such thing as uh, respecting individual uh, students' learning style, uh, I believe that that has certainly helped. Could you reflect on that? Um, you know, particularly on the part about the formative assessment on a on the part about the, uh, you know, instant feedback, on the part about uh, to get people enthusiastic in learning the second language, English language. Sure. So uh, as you and uh, Dr. Melika mentioned, uh, the main purpose of the formative assessment is actually giving uh, or providing positive feedback. So there is no doubt about it. Uh, but I would say uh, also uh, one part of like what, what we have practice and learn in the UK PS. What I personally experienced, uh, one of those things was using peer assessment. Peer assessment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, what as an English teacher I'm trying to do, I mean basically we are doing in a school of languages and general education is that in our TQF, in our course syllabus, we include the, the assessment rubrics mm -hmm. for the students. So in, I mean, and then we introduce and we talk about it uh, at the beginning of the term. We share it on Facebook. So uh, we show our students our target. So if you are reaching for, for example, A or I mean a high score, so this is the target. And then again, in terms of the peer assessment, uh, I personally ask my students to assess one another. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I teach uh, English for presentations. Uh, right now, uh, at the situation of COVID-19, for example, uh, I asked them to uh, do, a, a, do, do their presentation and post it on Facebook, for example. Mm -hmm. And then I asked the other students to give, instead of like the, I mean, in-class feedback, I asked them to give comments in the comment section of the Facebook. And then I asked my students, so like, if you receive more likes on Facebook, you probably get a better score. Or if you like, at the end of the presentation, the other students are expected to ask questions mm -hmm. and then the presenter are supposed to answer. Mm -hmm. So, and then, so I, I guess peer assessment is probably one of the best techniques that we can use. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the formative assessment, also in uh, School of Languages and General Education, I mean, in terms of the score allocation, the majority of the score allocation goes to formative, mm -hmm. not Mm -hmm. summative, which uh, I would say, again, really helped all of us in the School of Languages, I mean, at the current situation of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are two types of assessment here, summative assessment and formative assessment. 
Uh, formative assessment is very uh, important for student learning because, because it, it, it is about uh, tracking progress in, at every stage of student learning. Uh, so you do it every, all the time, every week, uh, every time you have uh, uh, lessons, you have, uh, you have some, some form of uh, formative assessment. Now, Dr. Malika, uh, you know, uh, we mentioned early on about your school, School of Science, has the largest number of HEA fellowship uh, within the uh, Walelak University at the moment. Um, you as a dean must have played a very important role uh, in getting your staff to apply for fellowship and very successfully so because uh, many of your staff uh, have been awarded a, a fellowship and more uh, seem to be coming. What is, what is your secret? You want me to tell the secrets? <laughs> that would be very difficult. First of all, I would like to thank um, faculty, fac I mean, academic staff at uh, School of Science because they're very smart. Okay, that's the secret. Okay. Okay. And second of all, they actually, okay, they, the material of the class they know. Okay, they know like hundred percent. They're really, really keen on the mm. subject that's already fulfilled at least one of the 15, okay? Dimensions. Do, dimensions. Mm -hmm. And then the, the second key important thing is that they use technology, okay? Technology in teaching, not many people are very, very comfortable with using technology, but when you take a look at the learner, the, the learner right now, they're changing their behavior. They born as digital nomad, okay? Mm -hmm. They're born in with technology. They're born with the iPhone or something, okay? So the School of Science uh, faculty staff, they're very keen on using technology in their teaching. For example, when they quiz, they use Kahoot quiz, okay? So the student want to, to be on the top three on the Kahoot, uh -huh. so they actually log in and answering on the question. It's not just answering the right question, but has to be very, very fast on doing it, okay? So mm, it's make the class really fun mm -hmm. and get really high score. And the, uh, our School of Science faculty member actually posting on the video clip on how to do the lab work. Students could replay many times as frequent as they like before they actually going and doing the laboratory. So that means even though, let's say, I am not that smart or bright students in the class, but I relearn, I mean, I learned it for like 20 times. I would definitely get A in the class for sure, okay? And for calculus, you think calculus is very difficult, but the lecturer taping themselves and solving this problem, you can replay it 20 times. Imagine me get an A in calculus class, that would be possible. Okay, it's not mission impossible anymore. It's mission possible. Yes, it, it, the point here, it seems to me, is that once you encourage a uh, teacher uh, to, uh, to learn about new tricks, so to speak, or new ways of teaching, including using different apps, they become more enthusiastic as a teacher. Uh, they then try to use many apps to enhance their teaching, hence, the quality of students increases. Uh, so that is a very, very, very uh, positive sign. And, and, and I think uh, the, the School of Science has been quite successful in uh, linking up uh, the, the higher level of staff training, particularly within the uh, UK BS framework and the use of new technology, new apps to enhance teaching and assessment and all of that. Ali, could you mention a little bit on your part about using different apps to help uh, teaching? Sure. Uh, I would like to, uh, uh, I mean, on behalf of uh, the lecturers of School of Languages and General Ed Education, I need to say we actually started using uh, ICT tools uh, in 2017, uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, using different apps, as uh, Dr. Melika mentioned, like uh, Kahoot usually, for example, yeah, I personally use Kahoot as a kind of brainstorming activities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at the beginning of the class. Mm -hmm. We actually use a lot of platforms. Mm -hmm. We use uh, 
Socrative, uh, mm -hmm. uh, for checking uh, vocabulary, mm -hmm. uh, the student, and then uh, like uh, at the same time we use Socrative for checking the attendance of the mm -hmm. students at the beginning mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we use uh, a lot of platforms like Google Forms. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, the best use of these platforms is that uh, like we can save papers. You know, mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. a lot of different forms of, uh, I mean, formative assessment. Mm -hmm. And then probably using these apps are really useful in terms of saving uh, papers. Uh, once again, uh, Dr. Melika updated about the School of Science. I would also, again, on behalf of uh, School of Languages and General Education, I would like to say we have, right now, we have uh, five, uh, let's say, uh, uh, UKPSF certificate holders. And also in our school, like any other school, all the lecturers, without any ex exception, they are all required to pass the pre-UKPSF. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the number probably is uh, a bit fewer uh, comparing to School of Science because like uh, a lot of our lectures in School of Languages and General Education are like, right now they are not permanent staff, so that's why, but they are all required and they all yes. pass the pre-UK. Right. Yeah, this is a very important point uh, and uh, everyone here is at Very Luck University is well aware of, uh, which is that uh, we have two types of uh, UK PSF training here. The first one is for, we call it certificate program, which is a full-on program, uh, getting trainers directly from the United Kingdom, from the Advanced SE, uh, to, to, uh, to organize uh, trainings in modules, entry modules, uh, totaling about 72 hours uh, across the three modules. Um, and uh, and the other type is we call it pre-UK PSF uh, training program. Uh, something that we have got a permission from the advanced SE to organize internally at Valley Luck University. Uh, we, because we would like to, to make sure that every teaching staff at this university is all exposed to uh, this such a wonderful teaching framework, uh, UK PSF framework. So we organize, we, we simplify the, the whole certificate program uh, into a more simpler, uh, getting just the essence of each of the topic or each of the uh, you know, elements or dimensions of UK BSF and get everybody, uh, the teaching staff, every teaching staff to go through this. Uh, we have also, uh, in organizing this pre-UK BSF uh, training program, we have both uh, in-person, face-to-face, uh, training programs and also as well as the online one. So, in other words, uh, at Valley Luck University, can, we can claim that virtually 100% of our teaching staff all have been uh, trained under the UK PSA framework. So, this is something that we are, uh, we are absolutely uh, very proud of. Now, the other point that I would like to you to respond to is this. Yes, we have uh, UK PSA framework training programs. Yes, we have got people who apply successfully the HEA fellowships. Uh, uh, yes, we continue to have uh, teaching and learning uh, discussions and forums and, 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 and everything. Uh, so we, we are also uh, doing a lot in, on top of the training provided by trainers from UK and the, the internal training through the pre-UK BSF program, we do more things on top of that, uh, which is about continuing professional development, uh, which is very important part of being a teacher or being in any profession. Uh, we, are not, we are not different from other professions that we need to learn every day about, uh, about new things that have come out uh, in the area of teaching and learning. So I like you, uh, Dr. Malika, the Dean of uh, School of Science, and I like Dr. Ali uh, Sahabi uh, from the School of Languages and, 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 and General Education to, uh, to say a few words on, on this. I mean, uh, what in terms of CPD or continuing profession on that, uh, that's being done at your school in collaboration with the university, uh, and how do you encourage your staff uh, to be part of that? Uh, thank you, Ajahn Surin, for a um, wonderful question. Okay? 
So right now, everybody know that we actually under COVID-19 situation. So all the class has to turn into online teaching and learning. So uh, thanks to Hualalak University that uh, they provide uh, tools and software and apps uh, techniques. Okay, so I make sure that the School of Science uh, academic staff actually have gone through all those trainings okay and i make sure that they do it well okay and there's no excuse when the when Wallach university provide the training and you will not have i mean you do not have time to attend and you tell me that you are not ready you can't even use those excuses anymore so if you not actually comply when Wallach university do provide you the training you have to do or google or I don't know, YouTubing or whatever, and then you have to be equipped. So uh, luckily, all the technology and stuff like that is actually um, being incorporated with the training style with uh, School of Science staff. Ali, would like to sure. reflect on that, please? Sure. You mentioned a very uh, important, significant point, uh, Dr. Surin. Uh, I would say uh, learning, I mean, teaching and learning never ends, mm -hmm. even at the current situation mm -hmm. of COVID-19, yes. in which also, I mean, the lectures in School of Languages and General Education, we were uh, well prepared in order to use, uh, I mean, ICT tools in order to shift the classes to the online platforms mm -hmm. by using like different apps like Zoom or Microsoft Teams, and also like, uh, yeah, we are also grateful to see the Walailak University already provided the Microsoft team accounts for all the lectures in which we can manage uh, not only our classroom, but also our uh, internal meetings inside the school. So, and then in terms of the UK, so these are the things that we also ex experienced, I mean, during the UK PSF workshop. And then again, uh, especially uh, specifically in terms of the workshop, uh, my personal experience was uh, it was a great chance, a great experience for me, especially to sit together. So we say UKPSF is a benchmark in which we can sit together. I mean, lectures from uh, different departments, different schools, different faculties, and then we can share our experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, in UK, I mean, uh, during the workshop, I had a chance to meet a lot of lectures. I mean, a lot of them have like uh, academic positions. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them are the PhD holders, uh, assistant professor, associate, and so forth. But then again, uh, as you mentioned, Dr. Surin, it's a good chance to mm -hmm. uh, share our experience and mm -hmm. update our mm -hmm. knowledge regarding teaching and learning. And uh, one of the things that I would like to mention, if I may, so for example, with the speakers of uh, the, the UK PSF workshop, uh, Cathy and Andy, uh, we ha after the workshop, we had, an, let's say, a kind of internal or post uh, meeting, I mean, internal panel. Uh, so they were actually interviewing us, like, as, I mean, we were, like, sh again, sharing some knowledge. So I, uh, what I propose is that, like, uh, we have, I mean, uh, even if we are from different disciplines, different faculties and different schools, but we are actually have a lot in common in terms of using uh, style and strategies uh, for teaching and learning. So we can like try to see what we have in common and we can try to include it in our TQF, in our course syllabus. Uh, in which I would say, for example, I, uh, you know, my discipline is language teaching, but at the same time, I, I mean, I'm, uh, my students, some of them are from the School of Science. So actually, it was a wonderful chance for me to know, uh, I mean, about like their main uh, major. So what's going on in, in their discipline? What projects they are working on? So, for example, uh, we have like English for specific purposes. So, if I know about the, the other disciplines in other schools, so probably I can help those uh, students in their own major, especially mm -hmm. like regarding mm -hmm. English teaching yeah. and that. Thank, thank you for, the, for, for your comments. Um, I'd like to reiterate the point again that I think with the UK PSF framework, uh, we have apart from other great things that we have achieved so far, what I have to say that I'm most happy 
about is the fact that we have been able to bring uh, teaching and learning to the center of our work uh, at the university. Uh, teaching and learning quality is of great importance to the life uh, of any university. So, um, and thanks to corporations and, and hard work like Professor, uh, the, the, the sort of, uh, uh, you know, the work that has done by Dean, uh, Dr. Uh, Associate Professor Dr. Malika, the Dean of uh, School of Science, or, or Ali, Dr. Uh, Ali, uh, without whom uh, teaching and learning reform would have been very difficult to, uh, to, to, to carry out. So, uh, is this a very important juncture uh, at which at university, uh, well, Lak University, that I believe that teaching and learning has uh, come a very long way and has achieved, uh, not, is no longer on the margin, but now pretty much at the center of, uh, of everything here, apart from, of course, obviously, uh, research and, and all that. So uh, I thank uh, very much for your participation today in this Walelak University global program. As I said, this is a program to disseminate information about, information about uh, activities that are related to internationalization of the university. And uh, we have uh, basically run out of time today. Thank you very much for, your, for being here. And thank you very much. <laughs>